What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. This will make sure you never miss an episode of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Sandy Alcantara, who made a return from his biceps injury and had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. His fastball velo was back to normal, sitting in the upper 90s, and of course he had his high velo changeups. He faced off against Bryce Elder, who had three Ks in five and a third innings, giving up four runs and had this nasty slider. Graham Ashcraft had three Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, and really relied on his sliders to get the Ks, and even had this White Castle special. He battled John Gray, who got a sword on this slider. Patrick Sandoval had five Ks in seven innings, giving up two earned runs, relying mostly on his dirty changeups. And I love this here, how he's waiting for the hitter to get in the box, kind of impatiently. And as a hitter, you're thinking, oh, he's going to throw a fastball by me. And instead, you get this changeup. Standing there waiting for a hitter is one of my favorite things a pitcher can do, because it shows he's dictating the pace of play. A total boss move. Anthony DiSclefani had 6 Ks in 6 innings, thanks to these nasty sliders. He faced off against Steven Matz, who had these two seamers and had 3 Ks in 4 innings, giving up 2 runs. Logan Gilbert had 6 Ks in 5 innings. He did give up 4 runs, but had his upper 90s fastballs and his sliders and splitters, including this total bowel-locking one. Ty Walker had 6 Ks in 4 innings, giving up 5 runs, and had this mix of sliders and fastballs. Michael Waka had 5 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs. Relying on his fastballs and sick changeups, he does have one of the better changeups among starting pitchers. He battled Drew Smiley, who got 4 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 2 runs on only 4 hits. Smiley's chief weapon was his knuckle curve. And check out this at bat against Machado. It's like he's blindfolded swinging at these knuckle curves. This has to be one of the worst at bats you'll ever see. Tyler Wells relied on his sick changeup as well as his curveball, fastball, and slider. It got seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up only two runs on four hits. His ERA this year is now 279. Hunter Brown had eight Ks in seven scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. Brown relied on a filthy mix of knuckle curves, splitters, a 94-mile-an-hour slider, and upper 90s fastballs. Brown keeps getting better and better each outing. Just a very talented young pitcher. Domingo Herman had 8 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 4 runs thanks to these curveballs. Ruansi Contreras relied on his filthy mix of sliders and his mid-90s fastball. And check out this fastball that was absolutely chalked. Just totally on the line of the batter's box and still called a strike. An absolutely horrible call. And from here on out, I don't want to hear anybody complaining that a pitch was called a ball even though it was a strike because the catcher moved his glove too much. I mean, look how much movement there is here in trying to frame this pitch, and the ball still never gets to the zone, yet that's called a strike. Bottom line is, bring on the robo-umps. Tony Gonsolin made his season debut in this game and had 1K on this 86-mile-an-hour slider. Kodai Senga was filthy with 7Ks in 5 innings, giving up 2 runs. Relied on his sweeper and his cutter, and you can really see his cutter spin in this video. And of course, he had his famous ghost forks. Here's an overlay of Senga's 97 mile an hour fastball with an 83 mile an hour ghost fork. And look how that ghost fork disappears, like a ghost. Senga battled Mackenzie Gore, who was totally outstanding, with 10 Ks and six innings, giving up only one run on four hits. A dominating display with his curveballs and 96, 97 mile an hour fastball. He really abused the Mets lineup all day. Yusei Kikuchi had 8 Ks in 5 and 2 thirds scoreless innings, thanks to his splitters, his low 90 sliders, and his fastball. And if you notice, his slider and fastball aren't separated that much in velo. Here's a 95 mile an hour fastball and a 92 mile an hour slider. And you can see why that lack of velo separation can really fool a hitter because it looks like a fastball and then dives. And I love Kikuchi giving himself a round of applause after his last K. 
I applauded too. He's a lot of fun to watch pitch. He outdueled Michael Kopech, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, and had this slider in 97 mile an hour fastball. Freddie Peralta had eight Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, thanks to his slow curveballs and nasty changeups, as well as his slider and fastball. Herman Marquez had these knuckle curves and had four Ks in three and two thirds innings, but had to leave due to triceps pain. And he faced off against Tanner Bybee, who was freaking outstanding. He's the fifth ranked player in the Guardians organization and just tore it up. He had eight Ks in five and two thirds innings, giving up only one run. His fastball was in the mid to upper 90s and had a vicious slider and filthy changeup. You could see Flo even pointing and laughing at these poor Rockies hitters. Here's an overlay of Bybee's fastball and slider, and you can see why that combo can be devastating to a hitter. And here's a fastball and changeup overlay, and you can really see in this still frame how he gets beat by the velo difference on that changeup. The hitter already finishes his swing, and the changeup still isn't there. But my filthiest starting pitcher of the day yesterday was Zach Gallen. Zach Gallen had 12 Ks in six and a third scoreless innings. This was his fourth straight scoreless outing. He now has 28 consecutive scoreless innings after having a string of 44 and a third scoreless innings last year. Gallon relied on his mix of fastballs and knuckle curves, and here's an overlay of his fastball and knuckle curve. You can see how well he repeats his mechanics and how well that curveball is disguised as a fastball and then just dives to the dirt. He also had an outstanding changeup. I think here he pretty much reads a note to himself saying, strike him out, and then throws this changeup to get the K. And check out this amazing changeup. This is a wrong way changeup that cut seven inches. That is, it went glove side instead of going arm side like most changeups go. And this thing fooled absolutely everybody, including Zach Gallon. Vinny Pasquantino tweeted at me that this was probably the nastiest pitch he's ever seen. And it was totally inadvertent by Gallon. After the game, he also said it was like Gallon was playing chess out there, just mixing up his pitches, moving hitters' eyes around, just outthinking and outsequencing hitters. I had to run out of the house to get some bourbon, so I was a little late tweeting Gallon's 11th and 12th Ks. And you can see he was very disappointed in the dugout. Gallon now has 51 Ks and only five walks this season. And I love this stat that only two pitchers since 1901 have struck out 40 or more batters and allowed no runs and no more than one walk in any four game span. And that's Clayton Kershaw and Zach Gallon. If baseball is like chess, well, Zach Gallon is a grandmaster. And just because you're subscribed to this channel or will be because you really want to be a part of Ninja Nation, here is Zach Gallon's changeup grip from his interview with me. Yeah, yeah. not really a circle. Um, not like much grip pressure either. Um, for me, it's kind of, I feel it here like in the thumb. Let me see. Yep. So I feel it like here in the thumb, like right in this point right here. And then on the inside of my um, like index knuckle type of deal. And so for me, those are probably like the two pressure points, I guess. And it's not really much pressure anyway. It's just kind of like, all right, those are the two parts where I'm attached to the ball that I know I have to pronate with those kind of turn the, I, I look at it as like, you're kind of like turning the radio, like to, you're turning the knob on a radio or any type of knob, whatever it is. And then just at the end, it's just kind of like a flick almost. Zach Gallon is now the second favorite for the NL Cy Young behind Spencer Strider. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Will Vest had this nasty slider. Zach Birdie had these wicked sliders. Alex Young had this sick changeup and curveball. Brent Hedrick had this slider and fastball for a sword. Brad Hand had this slider and fastball. Sir Anthony Dominguez had this fastball and slider. Josh Stalmont had these hammers. Craig Kimbrell had these filthy knuckle curves. AJ Minter had this overpowering fastballs. Eli Morgan had these fastballs and changeup to K the side. Andrew Chafin had this six slider. Eric Swanson K the side with these splitters and his fastball. Yanir Cano had this 95 mile an hour sinker and then gave the strikeout pose stare down. 
Apparently, Felix Bautista has nicknamed Cano the Rock because he's the mountain. And the mountain was filthy yesterday, too, with his 101-mile-an-hour fastball and 89-mile-an-hour splitter. And here's an overlay of his 100-mile-an-hour fastball and 89-mile-an-hour splitter. And good luck. Adam Adovino had this wicked front-door two-seamer and this slider. But my filthiest reliever yesterday was Hunter Harvey. Look at these overpowering fastballs and these absolute wipeout splitters. Just cut through the Mets like a knife through butter. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of Zen. I don't know how Zen killing can be, but everybody loves the Ripper. I always hate it when John Tumpain, aka the Ripper, ah! wastes his case stabs on lefties. But in this game, that's all I was getting. So I decided to put a righty ghost in the box rather than waste these beautiful stab outs. Of course, after I did this, he finally got a righty got to stab to death and put on the eternal IL. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to pull out the big guns. We're going to go with Shane McClanahan for 7Ks or more, Garrett Cole for 8Ks or more, and top it off with Shohei Otani for 9Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 